Hmm. Uh, friends, uh, I'm going to phone uh, the Watchtower and ask them a question about all the things I found out about them. How can I come back knowing these things and do you would even want me back knowing all these things I would always be a threat to tell somebody you know that so I'm going to call one up and ask them right over this phone how can I return knowing all that I know Okay. Uh, I would like to speak to an elder, please, about a problem I'm having. Yes, could you tell me which state you are calling from, please? I'm calling from Delaware. Are you in an English congregation? Yes, I, I'm in a congregation down here, English. Yes, uh, I'm a, a, a baptized witness down here in Delaware, and I have a question that uh, hits me deep in my heart, and I have to ask someone that uh, is in a higher authority to give me an answer. I have brought it out to the elders of the congregation, but I really want to hear it from someone up in Brooklyn. Would you like to hear what I have to say? My name is John. I just have to leave it that way because I don't want to cause no problems. Okay. Now, I've been... What kind, can I also ask what kind of issue you go to? Or? The issue is this here. I've, I've been in uh, truth for 32 years. Hmm. Okay. And now I have found out things that is bothering me. I want to know how can I remain a loyal Jehovah Witness, knowing the things I have found out. Now, I didn't find these out from apostates. I found it out on television. For example, the UN scandal, the failed dates, child molestation, and most of all, Ray Friends. How can I remain a loyal brother now, knowing all these things? That's all I want to know. How can I remain one knowing all these things? Uh, may I ask um, for you to elaborate on some of those? If it's okay. Okay. Uh, for example, the UN scandal. That that was a scandal. It's been proven. It's been proven, and it was denied by the uh, the Watchtower. But it's true. It was in the major magazines, major newspapers. There was no apostate doing that. And the failed dates that has, like 1975, I was one of the victims of that. Okay, but now uh, the the people, the Watchtower blamed them, blamed the flock for issuing those, those kind of beliefs. Well, if, if the people started that rumor... How come the Watchtower didn't disfellowship them if that was causing all these problems? And then the child molestation cases. 
I've listened to the uh, the Australian uh, Royal Commission, and that's not no apostates. That is a government that's issuing this report about child molestation. And then Raymond Franz, what was done to him, who was a dedicated governing body member, who was pure. He was a he was a great elder. He was a great governing body person. But what was done to him for eating a meal? Now, I know all that. How can I remain a true Jehovah Witness? And I've been in it 32 years. And have you spoken to your elders? I have. I have. And uh, I don't really get an answer. It's not the kind. It's like an evasive answers I get. Evading the questions. I don't have enough faith. I'm not going out in the field service enough. I don't pray enough. That does not disqualify the newspaper journals that are out on the market. The Britain uh, Guardian paper that brought out the UN scandal. That's got nothing to do with any apostates. It's got nothing to do with uh, being weak in the faith. It's got nothing to do with that then. It's a fact. And I, and I love the truth. But now I'm finding out things that can't remain in my heart then. How can those things, I mean, in other words, how could I come back and stay a loyal Jehovah Witness knowing all these things? How can I? That's all I want to know. How can I remain a true Jehovah Witness knowing the things I have found out? I have not been disfellowshipped. I've not been put on reproof. Nothing like that. But these things are bothering me. Yeah. Well, thank you for opening up and sharing some of those things with us. Yes. Um. And now you you said you've you've talked you've talked this over with with some of your elders and. Yes, I have. And have they encouraged you to do something like? Well, like I told you before, the answers were evasive, uh, more or less like uh, blaming apostates or something like that, uh, you know. And but, uh, like I said before, the Guardian Press in 1991 is not an apostate. It's a legal newspaper. Someone brings to your attention something disturbing about a person you know, a friend. Uh, you would uh, obviously you would ask for clarifications on, on those things. Yes, and that's mm. what you're doing right now, which is which is commendable. Um, now, though. If I, sh if I share a scripture with you, do you have your Bible on you? Yes, I have one. Sure. Okay. Now, if you turn to... Uh, let me pull up the scripture. I'm pulling up my Bible right now. Matthew 11. Okay, Matthew 11. Okay. For example, I thought if you can read verse 18 and 19. Okay. Okay, likewise, John came neither eating nor drinking, but people say he has a demon. The Son of Man did come eating and drinking, but people say, look, a man who is glutton and is given in drinking wine, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. All the same, wisdom is proved righteous 
by its works. Yeah. So this scripture gives you a principle uh, of how to uh, to gauge things, basically. Um, you might, for example, hear Jesus. People did say things about him. Now, for example, why did you think people said he was a friend of tax collectors and sinners? Well, they were uh, they were lying on him. Yes, but I mean, Jesus trying to make him look people, bad. Yeah, Jesus did actually, on occasion, there were occasions where he did eat with tax collectors. Yes, he did. Like with Matthew, right? Yes. So on the surface, you you feel like if you were back then and people said this, oh yeah, so I, I saw Jesus, he went into a tax collector's house and, and he ate with them. Or he, he drinks wine with them. Or he, he's always getting invited to people's homes. This man is a glutton. On the surface, those accusations may sound true because Jesus did. And in fact, he, he did go to Matthew's house. He did share a meal with them. And, and there they happened to be tax collectors in, in the, in the, in the, at the gathering. But now, does that mean that Jesus was a glutton? Does that mean that Jesus was friends with people of ill repute? No. Oh, when, you, when you look deeply, he said all the same, he said, Wisdom is proved righteous by what? Uh, by faith. But, but okay. okay. By its works. By its works. Okay. Now the footnote says by its results. Right. Yeah. Right. So now, so you have this things that you've heard from newspapers, from uh, other sources that you have heard. And so you have what, that on one side, and then you have what you know about Jehovah's organization on the, on the other side. Now, by, by means of this phone call, I'll be upfront with you, John. I, I'm not going to address those things point by point because they are extensive subjects. But I'm going to give you a principle you can apply to meditate on what you're receiving. So mm -hmm. well, when you analyze information... Remember, the Bible says the ear tests out words, just like the, the, the palate tastes food, right? Yes. So now, uh, instead of giving you all the extensive answers, which would take quite a lot, I would encourage you, yes, you have received those reports, but then also you compare them with what you do know, actually, what you actually know about Jehovah's organization. For example... Are Jehovah's Witnesses neutral? Yes. Why, what makes you believe that? Well, I see it. Because I was in it so many years, and uh, they took no stand on, on uh, war, politics, nothing like that. They were neutral in all the uh, turmoil of the world. Yeah. Did they have to suffer for that? Oh, yes. Uh, they, they had to suffer, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what makes you think that people from all over the world, all Jehovah's Witnesses all around the world, different backgrounds, different, they belong to different countries, different races, different ethnicities, why are all of them neutral? Well, I would say... Why, why, why is it not just some brothers in, say, Rwanda, they're the only ones that are neutral, not the brothers in the United States? What mm -hmm. makes every Jehovah's Witness neutral? Of course, the Bible commands it. Yes. But we're also, we all are under the same organization. We're all being fed the same spiritual food, right? Yes. And we're also, not only that, but the, also the organization gives us practical help to maintain our neutrality. For example, you remember the, you might have, I don't know if you've lived through it, but you, you might have also heard about it, the flag salute case in the United States. Yes. How was that resolved? Well, it went to the Supreme Court. Uh, the uh, society did. Okay. And and then also when when uh, uh, other religious organizations were heralding when the UN, when the United Nations was formed in 1946, uh, what did Jehovah's Organizations say about the United Nations in 1942? 
Well, I don't, re- I don't, I don't remember that, but uh, I know in the Revelation book they ran the United Nations down. Yeah, uh, in, fa- in fact, 1942, before even the United Nations was formed, Brother Nor he gave a talk on peace can it last, and he said, and Re- Revelation 17 highlights that the World War II is not Armageddon. In fact, after World War II, there will be a period of peace because. Revelation says the beast will come up out of the abyss again. So the society, the brothers who are taking the lead, the faithful slave, slave said this beast will rise again after the war, and there will be a period of peace. And because they knew that, they established the Gilead School because they knew there will be a, a period of time, there will be peace. That, that was an opportunity to preach even even more greatly on a grand scale, so they prepared for that time. Even though the war, the, the war was not over yet, 1942, still three years left, but, but, they, but in faith, they established a theocratic school, the, the theocratic ministry school, the Gilead school, so that they were ready for that missionary activity. So uh-huh. They knew that this beast was belonged to Satan's world, but because it, it will rise up, there will be a period of peace, that they were getting prepared for. So really, always, Jehovah's Organization has always been focused on the preaching work. One. It's always been focused on maintaining neutrality. Not, not, not just even in voting, but also even in our thoughts. We're always encouraged to be neutral in our thoughts, to be respectful of governmental authorities, but also not to side with them. So now based on Matthew 11, those are the works of Jehovah's Organization. So based on what you know about that, and then the reports you hear, you compare those two, and you see it, and you ask yourself, is the wisdom of Jehovah's Organization, is it being proved righteous by its works? Yes, uh, but see, there, there's some, there's some, uh, there's some questions that, like, like the, uh, the UN thing, why did they have to belong to the NGO? Because, look, I've read all about that. They didn't have to do that to belong to no uh, library. I can go in the library myself. But why did they have to join the NGO? Because now, see, when I heard about that, I physically phoned the United Nations and asked them the truth about the whole matter. And they told me that they indeed belonged to it for 10 years. Now, what am I supposed to do? Pretend that that didn't happen? No, no. It's not, I'm not asking you to pretend that, that it doesn't happen, but again, I'm not, to be honest, myself, Brother, Brother John, I don't know specifically the details of that case, so it will be not wise for me. You don't know the details of that case? No, I don't. Personally, I don't. Oh, my uh, God. But. Well, how can you defend it then if you don't know the details on it? I mean, I've, I know the, the the general outlines of what has been said, but that's why I can't say specific comments though on what on the you know, the library. So that's why. Yeah, I know the the fellow at the UN told me that they belonged to it from 1991 to 2001. He had no reason to tell me that unless it was true. He was not no anti Watchtower. He was no anti Jehovah Witness. He told me the fact. I'm not saying that he, he is or he was, Yeah. but uh, what I'm saying to you in light of Matthew 11 is we have to make sure that we have the whole picture, and sometimes we do not. Well, you mean there's another picture? Uh, uh, other, other words, there's, a, there's another picture from all the four things I named you? In other words, there's never no absolute that you're wrong? Uh, th- that's another thing I want to ask you, because... I was watching JW.org, and the the governing body said that they were not infallible and were not inspired. Well, what does this tell me? This tells me that Psalm 146, 3 and 4 is true. It's true. I love that scripture. They said they were not infallible, and they were not inspired. So this tells me that they're, they are no different than any other religion then, if they're not inspired. Well, well, you have to understand, Brother John, that, yes, 
this is an organization, but we don't claim to be infallible. I mean, I'm sure you know that. They said that on on that JW Orange. I know that. That's See, well, not, not really, because if we had claimed to be infallible, sometimes we would not we would not adjust our understanding of scriptures. That's what makes Jehovah's Organization beautiful, is that when we have to adjust things, we are willing to adjust because we don't claim to be infallible. Whereas other religions, they claim to be infallible, and that's why they're not willing to change. Well, I only, only the Pope I know that claims that. I never heard any other religion say that, that you were infallible. Okay. How, because, in other words, if, you, if you're going to eliminate Psalms 146, 3, and 4, then you can say that. But you can't. You, you cannot eliminate Psalm one forty six three and four. It is there in the Bible. Yes, and, and I'm not saying that we are. And what do you know? Do you know what it says? Yes. Okay. Do not, do not put your trust in princes, nor in the son of man who cannot be himself. Now, is there a governing body the son of man? I'm sorry. Is the governing body the uh, the son of man? Well, the governing body, as as a group, they are the faithful and discreet slave that Jehovah has appointed to, to provide food at the proper time, and they follow the leadings of, of Jesus Christ. Yeah, what well, you're saying that, but I'm telling you that according to Psalm 146, 3 and 4, you do not put your trust in men, nobles, or kings, or queens, because they die and go back to the ground just like you do. So this is telling me is, not to put your trust in men unless they are infallible or unless they are inspired. Now, these are my words, inspired. If you are inspired and you are infallible, I'm, I'm going to believe everything you say. But if you're fulfilling Psalm 146, 3 and 4, should I trust everything you say? No, you trust Jehovah. That's I trust Jehovah, but I'm talking about men now. And and then and Psalm 146 is saying, trust Jehovah only. Yes, right. The main source, yes. But that Psalm 146, 3 and 4 is not talking about Jehovah. It's talking about men. Yeah. We don't trust. We don't put our trust. We don't, we don't follow men. Well, isn't the governing body men? Yes, but they are just like any other man in the Bible. They are being used by Jehovah. But we are really followers of Jehovah. We're not followers of men. Moses was a man, right? Uh, now, look, look, brother. Are you telling me you don't follow the governing body? Are you Are you saying that? No, I'm not saying that, brother John. Please let me explain myself. What I said was, the governing body has been appointed by Jehovah and Jesus to take the lead. But we. That our our real leader is Jehovah. The governing body is, is 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 an instrument that Jehovah is using to lead us. But really, we are lead we are led by Jehovah, just like the Israelites. They they were led by Jehovah. They were not followers of Moses. Moses was being used by Jehovah. But when they obeyed Moses, they were obeying Jehovah, even though Moses was imper an imperfect man. So their, their loyalty to the arrangement that Jehovah has put in place showed that they were loyal to Jehovah. They were not followers of Moses. They were led by Jehovah. But Moses was being used by Jehovah as an instrument to lead them. Yeah, it's a... So when they put their trust in Jehovah, because he was the one that led them to the wilderness by the hand of... He was using Moses... But really, they were putting their trust in Jehovah, and never in the Bible did Moses claim that he was infallible. Moses never claimed that he was, he never made mistakes, he was an imperfect man. But they had to be loyal to Moses, even though he was imperfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, everything you're saying is true, brother. Uh, you're talking about things that happened in the Bible, in the Old Testament. We're talking about 2017 here now. We're not talking about Moses because I am living now. I'm not living back then. I'm living now. Yes, yes my, my brother, Brother John, but Jehovah has not changed, though. He's not changed, but I think men have changed. I, you know, you know, bro, let me tell you something. When I was baptized in 1973, 
And in, in 1980, 81, I saw a change coming in the, in the watchtower. I saw it coming. I, I saw a hardness start in the governing body. And it was beautiful in the beginning when I first came into the truth. It was, it, it was the answer to my life. But it seemed like something happened in 1980 and 81. It came like a mean-spirited thing coming on the scene. Now, I'm talking about reality in my life. I don't care about anything else that the Bible says. I'm talking about reality of what I saw. A hard spirit came upon the scene. Something has happened. I can't explain it, but something has happened. I don't know what it is, but I know it's like a, a hard a hard-lined attitude now of disfellowshipping people. You know, no no reason at all. This is what I've seen since I've been into this. A mean-spirited thing that's going on since 1980 or 81. That's what I've seen. I had lived it, ate it, slept it, and drank it. I've lived it. See, I mean, you can tell me about uh, Moses and all that, but I'm talking about me as a human being seeing these things. I can't pretend I didn't see it. That's why I asked you from the beginning of this conversation. How can I remain a Jehovah Witness knowing the things I know now? That is my question. Yes, and, and that's a, a thing, though. We, we are led by the Bible, aren't we, Brother uh, John? Absolutely. Uh, and and we, we, when we have doubts, when we're not sure of things, when we need reassurance to, for guidance on what to do, uh -huh. you go to the Bible. For example, the apostles and the disciples of Jesus, when Jesus said that whoever does not drink my blood or eat my flesh does not have everlasting life, many were disturbed. Well, understandably, it was at first. If you did not understand what he meant, it was a, it was it could be disturbing. But the, the the main point is that the apostles, even though they did not understand exactly what Jesus meant, they were loyal to him. Oh, well, that's blind faith. I mean, I, I'm I'm not talking about their faith is blind, but I'm talking about today. It's blind faith for me to believe a man, no matter what he does. Because Psalm 146, 3 and 4 says, don't believe everything a man says. Because they die and go back to the ground just like I do. Mm -hmm. See, now, the governing body so, is men. So, so that, that cuts both ways, though, Brother John. That cuts both ways in the sense that you don't put your trust in man, you don't put trust in Jehovah. That means your faith is not solely based on news reports. Yeah, but uh, I, I, reality is based on what I see. I mean, I have a mind to see for myself. I can see, you know, uh, if if I see a, a pretty woman, I can't pretend that she's not pretty. I'm lying to myself. And, Brother John, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, that's why I read that scripture to you from the beginning. I'm saying use that principle to test out what you're hearing. That's what I'm saying. I well, I, I, I checked on these things, brother, and it looks, it looks pretty bad about this child molestation stuff. It looks terrible. I hear it all, all over where I live at. Uh, you know, and when I knock on a door, what do I say to a person who brings that up to me now? I don't know what to say. And it's, it's like down here where a woman, a school teacher, was was uh, arrested for having sex with a 14-year-old child in the Kingdom Hall 36 times. And yet, she was a pioneer. She was a school teacher, too. I mean, this is what I see. This is reality. This has got nothing to do with the Old Testament, nothing to do with the New Testament. Reality. In other words, keep the congregation clean. You cannot keep a congregation clean if there's a human being sitting in there because they are sinful at all times. You never have a clean congregation. 
You can keep cleaning it out, but it's always going to be there as long as you're human beings. There's so many things, brother, that goes through my mind now that I can't even mention all of the things that go through my mind. Uh, when I hear of, of something bad, am I supposed to say, well, it's not really bad, it's what they're saying. No, I can see for myself. I don't, I don't think what other people want me to think. I don't do that no more. Because why should I think what other people want me to think unless I know it's true? Maybe can I give you a reference that may help? What's that, brother? It's a May 1st, 2009 Watchtower. Well, maybe you write it down. May 1st, 2001. Watchtower. 2001? 2009. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, 2009. All right. All right. Also, uh... July 1st. July the 1st. 2001 Watchtower. Okay, Watchtower. Okay. Eight, 18, pages 18 to 21. Page 18 to 21. Okay. Yeah. I hope that helps. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I, I appreciate you talking to me this long. I know you got things to do up there. Uh, yes, and I'm really, uh, just to, to, to be frank, Brother John, I, um, even though right now we're not seeing eye to eye, you and I, but I, I do feel for you that you are disturbed by these things, and I'm not saying that you are, uh, uh, you're, 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 I'm not saying that you, you're lacking or that you're, uh, somehow not faithful to Jehovah. But uh, I'm trying also my, my best to help you see that yes. the Jehovah is a God that understands our, our difficulties, but he appreciates our loyalty. To okay. Him. Yes. All right, and brother. Sometimes, sometimes it may take time for things to clear up. Okay. And, and that has happened in the past. Some also have had questions. Yeah. But, uh, in the end, though, we should not let our relationship with Jehovah uh, deteriorate because of other things, and Jehovah appreciates us when we're loyal to Him and to His arrangement. Yeah, okay. All right, I'll take you at your word, brother, and uh, I appreciate you talking to me, and uh, I'm going to pray a little bit more, And uh, but like I told you before, these things are ingrained in me now because they are reality, and I believe in reality. I don't believe in everything, you know, that you can't see and this and that, this and that. Reality is reality. If I see a car pull into my driveway, there's a car in my driveway. I can't pretend that it's not. But I thank you for talking to me anyway. All right, brother. Okay, thank you, sir. Right. All right, bye-bye. Well, you heard it. I gave the brother four things there that I was concerned about. The UN scandal, failed dates, child molestation, and Raymond Franz. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what he said. Y'all heard what he said. And y'all heard what I said. And, like I told him, Psalm 146, 3 and 4 says what it means and means what it says. The governing body are dying men just like I am. They die just like I do. So, if they are not infallible, if they are not inspired, why should I believe everything they say? Well, I can, I don't have to believe that they're wrong about everything, but also can believe they're not right about everything. Okay? Because if they were right about everything, then there wouldn't be no Psalm 146, 3 and 4. Okay? 
So, but I'm glad I made the phone call because, you know what, friends? I'm finding out another thing. When you phone the watchtower, all you have to do is tell them the truth. That way they're not going to hang up on you. They'll talk to you as long as you are telling them the truth. But you can't argue with them that, hey, you brought the United Nations, blah, blah. No, no, no. I did not tell them the truth about it's bothering me. It's not bothering me at all. But I put myself back 10, 12 years ago when I first started hearing things that were not right about the Watchtower and the reason I got out of it. All these things, then I started searching. And indeed, I found out there ain't nobody no, no, just like I am. They die, go back to the ground just like I do. So, if that is the case, you have no bugle to blow. See? Now, I like the way they always say, don't leave Jehovah or this and that. Jehovah ain't got nothing to do with it. The governing body is the governing body. Jehovah is Jehovah. They're the ones that claims that they're God's organization. The Bible don't say that, but they say it. And I'm supposed to believe that. Well, as you heard, I don't believe it. They're, they're no more of an of organization of God than I am. Any God's organization that buys stocks into companies that make weapons of war, you know, God's organization, it's a big business. Big business. What else can they be? Okay? And independent thinking is of something that the watchtower frowns upon. Well, I think I told a brother that I am independent. I think for myself. If a car pulls into my driveway, a car pulled into my driveway. I don't give a damn what scripture you use. The car is in my driveway. That's an illustration, as you all know, friend. If a car pulls into your driveway, it's in your driveway. I don't care what anyone says. It is out there in the driveway. This is the way the watchtower does. They want you to believe that it's not in the driveway if they say it's not in the driveway. I don't believe nothing that a religious element says. Now, I'll tell you one other thing, friends. I'm not going to kick the Watchtower 100%. I'm not going to kick their representatives 100%. Because when I first came into the so-called truth, Christendom, the mainstream of religion in this world that is supposed to represent God or Jesus, they were not doing their job. We all know that. We all know that. Christendom has nothing to brag about and neither does the Watchtower. Christendom, who has people like Joel Osteen, Creflo Dollar, T.G. Jakes, this white girl, that's her name, this Benny Hine, Jesse the Planets, all this nonsense, that's all it is. Dr. Murdoch, sow your seed, sow your seed. $58 a month for 12 months, and God will bless you. Well, what is all this telling me? It's telling me what... Gov uh, no, it wasn't the government, it was... Uh, Rutherford said back in the 30s, religion is a snare and a racket. That is one thing he said that was true. 
No matter what you say or anybody else says, he said religion was a snare and a racket. But he didn't say it included his religion, but it did. They are a racket just like any other religion is. Just like any other religion is. I'm not talking about this little church in the wildwood or the little church on the corner. Well, to me, I have more respect and more love for those little churches that are still hanging on. To me, they are the true people of this world that represent God. That little church in the wildwood. Not these big conglomerates like the Watchtower. Building mansions. Building a city in Warwick. A compound. Manipulating people's money. Donating to them. Come on. Let us face reality. Let's quit pretending. I'm sick and tired of pretending God. Pretend that God. That is the way most people in this world now are doing. They're pretending God. That's all it is. They're pretending. Look at the world. If the world was not pretending God, they wouldn't be having all these problems. They're pretending God. It don't work. It does not work. You know, I'd rather be someone who don't even do anything about God than pretend. Than pretend. See, because when you pretend, it's not real. You're, you're like a, a movie actor. You're pretending a scene. It's not really real, but you're pretending it. But the Watchtower, I would say, has helped a lot of people get off of drugs, quit smoking. Yeah, they, they're good at that. I, I give credit where credit is due. They helped me stop smoking. See? And they helped me stop drinking. And they helped me in a lot of ways. But imperfection shows up. Like I told the brother in the 80s, I seen a hard line coming in through the watchtower. Mean-spirited people were now operating the watchtower. Mean-spirited. And I think it goes back to Raymond Franz. 1980s were when he was just fellowship. And that tells me that was probably what I was trying to tell him. Mean-spirited sought in when they disfellowshipped him for eating a meal with a disassociated person. Not a disfellowship person, but a disassociated but now he don't know what I know. That was the only charge that they and their uh, judiciary committee nonsense could get him with. Eating a meal with a disassociated person. Eating a meal. Now... The question comes up, did Jesus eat a meal with people that were tax collectors, that were downtrodden, that didn't have a lot of faith? He ate with them because he was trying to win them over. So that brother's 100% wrong. See? He's 100% wrong. Is nobody 100% right. And I should not have said he's 100% wrong because I'm sorry I said that. But he's not right about most things. Especially any time 
someone tells you to come back to Jehovah. No, come back to the watchtower. In concluding this talk, friends, I do want to phone the watchtower and ask them about bringing reproach upon God's name. Now, I sincerely believe you cannot bring reproach upon God's name. How are you going to bring reproach on His name? You can't do it. You can bring reproach upon a man, but you can't bring reproach upon God. Because He is all knowing, all everything that's righteous. You can't bring no reproach upon His name. You bring reproach upon that congregation, upon that one who did wrong. That's where the reproach comes. But they'll tell you, don't bring reproach upon Jehovah's name. See, this is to keep you thinking that they are God's only people in the world. And we've got to keep this congregation clean. But like I told that brother, a congregation will never be clean as long as a descendant of Adam is sitting in that congregation. If you are born from Adam and you're sitting in that congregation, you're unclean. See? And you can't bring reproach on God's name. No way. It, it, there's no such thing as that. Absolutely. You cannot bring reproach upon Jehovah's name. Bring it on yourself. Don't bring him into this nonsense. Leave it to you. You're the one that's sinning. Bringing Jehovah into it. But this is what they always do. But in closing this talk, friends, I hope you have enjoyed that little conversation that I had with the Watchtower. And now I feel that I can call them up. And I'm going to continue to do this. But I'm always going to tell them the truth. To get him not hanging up on me. i got to speak that I'm truly seeking righteousness that I'm truly wanting to answer. Say, I'm no, not going to call them up to get into an argument. That Anybody can do that. Arguments have been going on about religion ever since man been here. Millions of people have died about arguing about religion. Religion is not only a snare and a rocket, it's a killer also. But I'm going to do some more videos and I'm going to call the Watchtower and talk to them about things that truly bother me. That's the way I believe you do it. Because as long as you're telling the truth, you don't have to worry about anything you said yesterday. And I have to sit down and figure out what I can call them about from a righteous viewpoint, not an apostate viewpoint. Of course, now, an apostate, I guess, is what I am. I've never been declared that, but what else can I be? Hey? And, friend, I can truthfully tell you, I have never been disfellowshipped. I have never been disassociated. I've never been put on reproof. I just walked out about 12 years ago. I didn't want no more to do with it. But that's the way I stand today. But the neighbors, they know I'm one. I know they've heard all about things, you know, talk gets around. And none of them speaks to me. I mean, right now my wife is in hospice. A little hospital I just took her to last night. That's how far my condition has gotten to. Uh, she no longer can hack it. I know that. All the poor girl keeps saying is, get me some help. Get me some help. I can't breathe. I'm choking. And she's 77 years old. And when I have taken to the emergency ward, 
All they'll put on there is anxieties. Thirty-five times she has been to a emergency ward. And I have gotten to hate those people in the emergency ward. And they hate me too. They hate me too. Because of all the friction that has been built up about them not helping her. All they would say is, go back to your family doctor. Well, I did that. I did that. It's all a charade. They're all the same way they work together. You get no right answer from them. So finally, after all of these six months, I finally got hospice to come here, and they listened to my story. It was a sad story. But hospice is good, as I can see right now. When I put her in there last night, I got a call from hospice to come back over to the hospital and stay with her because she's walking in the hallway. Well, now, hospice is, a, is some good people that works for them. They're not in it for the money. They're in it for treatment. Now, I went back over there and stayed, got in the, another bed they had in there for me, and all she did all night was, I can't sleep, I can't get my breath, I, I'm choking, and the girls kept coming back and forth, back and forth. And I told all of them, I said, now you'll see what I've been going through for the last six months. I could not take it no more. Because when she developed this old heart disease, I was told it's going to get worse. And indeed, it got worse. But right now, friends, that's where I stand. And uh, I'm going to get off the air now. And i got to go outside and do a little work. Because I haven't been able to do nothing with her here. Because all if I would go out, she's calling me from the door. She needs some help. She needs some help. And all she wants to do is me to call 911. And I won't do it. 35 times, it doesn't work. And I know better now. See, I know it don't work. That she'll be right back tomorrow. If you do it, it ain't going to change nothing. See? But friends... Thank you for listening to me, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I enjoyed doing it. So thank you all, friends, and God bless.